Hey, hey, it's Omega here. So today I'm going to show you how to take uh, or replace the wheel bearings on the rear uh, wheel of your uh, Suzuki DR650. So, uh, so I have the wheel taken off already. I've already taken the, the tube and the tire off. To change the bearings, you really don't need to do to strip it down that far. But I am because I, um, this is a wheel that I just bought, you know. And I, it has a lot of miles on the bearings, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them since I have a set. Um, yeah. So previously, I had uh, I had I'd done a video on how to replace the um, the, um, the bearings on uh, on your Cush uh, Drive hub. So today will be the rear wheel. So uh, so get your rear wheel, take it off the bike, and you have three bearings on it. And uh, so before. Um, what's on top of this is normally your uh, your sprocket and push drive hub, and uh, this is what I got here. Um, so it's so you just take it off, and you take the push drive rubbers off, so they don't get in the way. And then this is what you have. Pretty easy. Thus far, and then so so then uh, you're left with uh, you're left with two bearings. Um, the wheel bearings, the the rotor side, and then the sprocket side bearings. So today I'm going to use a handy dandy tool that I bought at a uh, Harbor Freight. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for it. It must have been upwards of fifty dollars, but I got it from Harbor Freight. It's item number nine five nine eight seven. It's a blind hole bearing puller set. That's what it is. Sorry, there's a uh, doing laundry here. But um, so with this tool, you can it's, it makes it easy to extract your bearings. So um, without this tool, one way to do it is to just kind of see there's a spacer in here, kind of kind of spacer to hold the bearings out. Um, what you want to do is get a screwdriver or something, a punch, and then just tap it, tap it till uh, till the bearing comes out on the other side. And uh, maybe it'll help if you heat the hub up, maybe, but uh, with this tool, I don't think you have any problems. So basically, it's a slide hammer with a little claw thing to grab your bearing. So you want to take the your proper uh, bearing tool. So uh, I don't think that one's the right one. <laughs> go up one more size until you get to the right one. It'll fit in there. Just right, there you go, so that's good. Then what you want to do is tighten it until the until the the little claws they go outward and they grab onto the bearing. And, uh, I can't do that with one hand. Also before I start taking out the bearings, uh, say I'm using a moose racing uh, bearing kit that I got from Procycle. It's a uh, part number Alpha two five one two five six, and this is the the rear wheel uh, bearing kit. It comes with the push drive um, bearing right here, and uh, and then these two wheel bearings right here. So I don't remember how much I paid for it. It must have been like thirty bucks or something. Uh, yeah. So and if your bearings are kind of old, you may want to replace them, and you want to make sure that when uh, when you roll them. That they roll free, freely, sorta. You know, they don't catch up or anything, and you want to make sure they're not wobbly at all. So this one is actually pretty good. It's still good, actually. But uh, I'm just gonna replace it anyway. So uh, first thing you might want to do is take out this seal here. So you want to get like a some kind of pry bar or a screwdriver, pry the seal out. still good too. I'll replace it with a new one so that the kit comes with a brand new one right here. And uh, yeah, so uh, but I'm gonna go start take this side off first for whatever reason. So just take a take your little claw tool and open it up until it gets in there. 
Alright, so you want to make sure they're nice and tight. So, uh, this particular puller requires a 26 and a 19 mil. If you, I guess if you don't have a 26, uh, you can use, a, use one of these guys. Should work fine. Tighten it pretty tight. And then, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see if we can get this bad boy off. So, uh, you probably want to do it on the ground. And, uh, so I'll just put it on tire there. And get the slide hammer part. And this is what's going to do all the heavy hitting. And uh, before using this, I highly suggest you get some, uh, some safety glasses, just in case uh, the tool just suddenly comes out and whaps you in the eye. You won't lose an eye, you know. So you want to go put this, sledge, this little slide hammer dealy here. Screw it in there as much as it'll go. I don't think it has to be uber tight. Alright, and then just go to town on it. some kind of force pushing down on it. Boom! There it is. Man. Totally worth the money. I paid for this bad boy. And actually it kind of came loose too. But uh, it held it just fine. So uh... And then if you want to get the other side out, so here's the spacer. Yuck. Just got a bunch of grease on it. So there's a spacer there. Now you can actually use that spacer to uh, to remove your bearing on the other side. I stick it in here. Stick it in here and then you can hit it with something like a socket. Yeah, hit it with a socket and it'll come out the other end. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use my slide hammer tool again. Since I paid a mucho dinero for it. Okay, round two. This one's being quite a bit more stubborn than the last one. Out. Woo. Da -da, there we go. I got him out. So you can see it's got some kind of like yellow grease in there. It's kind of turned brown. So uh, actually, uh, I think whoever had this wheel before, maybe this isn't the first set of bearings. Maybe. Well, these are still good. Uh, I probably ruined them by taking them out though. But uh, yeah, the um, the sprocket side. I mean, the the rotor side was a lot more harder to get out took a lot more persuasion to get it out. So, uh, so yeah, you can see there's like a, a pretty good amount of grease in there, so, um, whoever had these bearings before, they probably greased them. I heard in front of the factory they don't have a lot of grease. So, which brings me to our next task is we're going to go put grease in these bearings. So, take one of the bearings out. So this is, a uh, this, see how this it's open on one side and it's sealed on the other side. Well, this one is a double, double sealed bearing. So it's it's better, I suppose. But uh, really, the only the outer part is the one that seals it. So we're gonna go take this seal out. We're gonna take this seal out and uh, and try to grease it with as much grease as we can in there. Okay. All right. So I'll show you how to get the seal out. Just get like a really tiny screwdriver, kind of like a jeweler's screwdriver. 
And then you just kind of pry it in there between the seal. Try not to damage it too much. And out it pops. Kinda. Did I mess up the seal at all? Nah. So it should be fine. So, so you can see there is some grease in there, but not a whole lot. Let's go ahead and do that with the other one. I think they're the same size. Yeah, they are the same size. So they're interchangeable. So I think, I don't know, I think it'd probably be better to pry it from the outside because uh, the sealing surface is on the inside, the side, the part that moves. Let's see, go ahead if I can do that. Okay, I didn't really get it on video, but yeah, so what I did was I, I jammed the screwdriver in there very carefully and I pried out on the top. So I suggest using the top part because the top part isn't the part that moves. You know, If you do damage the seal, at least you damage the part that doesn't, you know, that doesn't move. There you go, I got both of them open, and just take your favorite grease, and then uh, grease the crap out of that. Alright, so you can use any, any, pretty much any automotive grease, so I'm using a multi-lube lithium EP grease here. Uh, you want something that's, uh, that has some water, water resistance. Not recommended for disc brake wheel bearings. Hmm, maybe I don't want to use this. Automotive wheel bearing and chassis lubricant. No, I think it'll be fine. Alright, well I'm sure this is pretty much, this will do. It says you can use it for wheel bearings. Okay. I don't know. But, uh, so just go ahead and uh, just get some grease. Just pack it. I want to get some in there and then just kind of just pack it in there tight. Kind of like putting icing on a cake. And then just kind of just trying to force it in there a little bit. Kind of like pack it in there. Just going to do that for the rest of them. Alright, so this side is packed pretty well, so you just want to go ahead and put your, uh, your seals back in. Just kind of just press them into place. There we go. And then do and then just wipe off the excess grease. And then what you want to do is wipe off the excess grease. Actually, remember what side uh, put the grease in. So just to see how well I packed it, I'm going to open the other side up. Okay, so, yeah, you want to go ahead and grease both sides. So see how this side, I, I thought I packed it pretty well, and it's still, like, kind of not packed on the other side. The, if you do both sides, it'll be better, because, like, it's kind of hard to force it in there, unless you have one of those bearing packer tools. I'm not sure it's uh, much better off than it was before, if you at least grease one side, you know? So I added more grease to the other side. No problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these seals back in. See all the excess grease just gets squished out. That's good. That means you know it's you got a good amount of grease in there. Air squishing out. 
Awesome. And just wipe off the excess grease from that side too. Okay, so there we go. They're all greased up, ready to go. So even before you even try this, even if you re try, before trying taking the other wheels off, I suggest uh, repacking the bearings since they don't come with too much uh, grease in it. So what I'm going to do now is if you have a freezer handy, what you should do is leave it in the freezer for about, for about 15 or 20 minutes or half an hour. And then we'll come back and we'll put, a, put it on. So uh, we'll, what we're going to do is freeze it and then get a heat gun and apply heat to the, to the hub. Okay, so uh, I kind of apologize. It's getting dark here, so I have to get my headlight out. And this washing machine is still washing clothes. But so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put add a little grease to where the bearing pushes in. Just a little bit. Just so it has some lube, you know. Let's do that for both sides. So there's probably some there's some grease in here still. So you can use that kind of leftover grease. It's amazing. This thing has like I think thirty thousand miles on it and it looks fucking brand new inside. It's uh, amazing, amazing. So the seals really do help a little bit. So hopefully that'll help it get in there. All right, so here we go. I've got my little my handy dandy uh, heat gun here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go heat up the hub here. Now it, it kind of helps if you have a, a thermometer of some sort, like a laser laser thermometer dealy, but I, I don't have one. That's probably one thing I'm gonna have to purchase for my toolkit, but uh. But just heat it up till it's nice and hot. So, so the idea here is that that the um, the hub will expand because it's getting warm, and then the bearing will shrink because you're freezing it. So, and it'll help it go in better. Pretty warm, so you're gonna want to get your bearing out as fast as you can. The frozen one. Just kind of plop it on top there. Oh, whoop! Oh, see how easily it just slid in there. That's it. I thought I would have to use the hammer to take it out, but nope. So that should be it. <laughs> that was a uh, super easy. Oh, that's like the easiest I've ever put a bearing in. So I think that's it. That's as far as it'll go, it just fucking just went in there like butter. So now go ahead, go ahead and heat the other side up. I heat it for about like two minutes straight. So you maybe you can't touch it very well. Frozen bearing, hot hub. Remember, this is the one that was. Oh, yep, there. See, just slid right in. That was perfect. So there you go. Heat that bad boy up. Yeah, it's, it's so I, I heat it up to the point where like I can only hold it for like a second or two, and I, I don't I don't want to hold it no more. So there you go. It's in there all the way. So now the last part to do. So yeah, it's in there all the way. Um, if um, you do get it in there, uh, you, if you do get it in there and it gets stuck, uh, that means you probably didn't freeze it enough and or you didn't heat the hub up enough. So what you want to do, I had these hammers ready just in case this happened. 
if it comes in crooked or this doesn't want to go in, just kind of just tap it, tap it along the edges like, like this, and then um, and then you can get like a like a chisel or a punch or something, and then hit that. It's important to not hit the center part. The center part is the one that if you hit it, you may damage the bearing. You know? So you want to hit the outside part with a with a chisel when it gets too far in for the hammer to hit it. And then um, hopefully you can get it in that way. But uh, yeah, that was super simple. It just it just went right in. So uh, um, that was like uh, I put the bearing in the freezer for probably like 15, 20 minutes. I heated up the hub for like two minutes with the heat gun on high, and uh, and it was awesome. It just slid right in. Okay, so now make next, the mistake, same mistake I did, and uh, forget to put the spacer in. Forgot to put the spacer back in before I put the bearing in. So. So now I have to start all over again. So annoying. So I have to go take the bearing out. Hopefully I didn't damage the bearing pulling it out again. I don't think it did, but let's see if it still spins. Yeah, it spins okay. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. So the first time here, what had happened is I thought it went in all the way and it didn't. Um, so there, remember the the one on the rotor has to have like a good amount of space on it still um yeah i think so i think the other side just went in perfectly because the spacer is perfectly lined up right now so that's how you can tell if it's gone too far uh if it's gone far enough on one side if the spacer becomes flush with the um where were the other bearing contacts but see obviously here it didn't go in all the way because you can see the grease um only went like halfway so the bearing really only went halfway in there so okay round three there. here Slip right in, and it doesn't this time. Okay, so it didn't go in like it was supposed to, like last time. So I'm just gonna tap it around the side and get it in there. that point you're gonna have to get a punch out just whap it so yeah anyway I can't do it with two hands with one hand but uh yeah you're just gonna go around and just start tapping it around like you did before or with the punch all right so when you get done that's how it should look uh, I kind of missed a couple times and I hit the seal I think it'll be okay when it starts moving around, it'll, it'll make some clearance. So, uh, yeah, there should be like a little gap, like about like half of your fingernail or something. You want to get your seal, put it in the same way. You might be able to just push it in. Indeed, you can't just push it in. Whammo. That's it. So you got to have enough room for the seal in there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really look like it seals it too well. What's up with that? Yep, there it is. Maybe you want to tap it a little bit with the hammer. I think that's good. Alright, mission complete. Uh, if you didn't get it in all the way, I mean, probably when you put the spacer in there, it's gonna, um, it's gonna, um, oh, actually, yeah, that's what the, this, the spacer is actually what seals on this, so when you put the spacer in there, and then you actually torque the wheels, uh, torque the wheel onto the, the swing arm, it'll, um, it might, it'll probably squish the bearings in, but, uh, but yeah, so there you go. That's it. All done. So don't forget to put the spacer in. <laughs> the one in the in the middle. Here's a make out.